Welcome back to the VST channel, Valenspeak Tech here guys. A new software update is available for the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. And what a surprise, after the fiasco with the June update, multiple versions received, the AWF1, F3 whatsoever, right now we are now finally getting AWF7, which is apparently rolling out with the July security patch, okay? So it's only 430 megabytes. One year version 5.1, still 5.1.1 are only released as a beta to some certain specific Samsung devices like the Z Fold 4 and the Galaxy S8 Tab. So no One UI 5.1, but who needs it, guys? We are now eagerly waiting for the One UI 6 based on Android, of course, 14, the better one. But before that, of course, let's proceed to download and install the July update. Now, will you get any new change logs? That's Samsung, so I don't think so. Yeah, see, AWF1 released on the 22nd of June. We are now already the 10th of July, guys, and we are getting a new software update, yet still there is no proper change log, just some facts here. So most probably it's only a security update. You can just find uh, the bunch of security things that are fixed with this Android released security patch of July. But I know that you are not here for this, guys, so you want me to test certain things, and this is also pretty much what I'm gonna do. Now, without any further ado, guys, I'm going to install it. This phone will certainly start lagging after a few days, so with restarting it, I want to give the phone a chance to just shine. So bear with me. After one moment, I'm gonna show you how you are able to go inside your recovery and very carefully delete the cache partition. I'm not going to optimize now all the apps with the good guardians. And then I'm gonna start with the usual stuff. So navigation between the home screen. I'm gonna test also the blur animations. I'm gonna test also the recent menu, the apps opening, apps closing animation, the camera as well. This year was the first official start of the July July AWF7 update. And if you have been paying attention, you probably have seen that I swapped here this Logitech controller with something here just for the background. And by the way, this is the Polyan Tracker. So that's my new toy, guys. I'm not sure how many of you know, but I am occasionally just doing some music for the fun. It's a very nice cable device. I might as well do some videos on the Polyan Tracker. Now that the first restart has been done and I shared previously with you, I'm going to take a bit of an unorthodox approach for this specific test. I'm just gonna wait for the system update to be fully applied. Then I'm going to turn off the phone, go inside recovery mode and show you how you can manually delete your cache partition. Of course, you need to pay attention because if you delete your data partition, then you're toasted. And then I'm going to proceed with my usual tests. Why am I doing this? Well, 17 days ago, guys, I released a full review on the June update. You can check the video here after nearly more than two weeks of testing. Now I want to just take this approach and just allow the S23 Ultra to really shine and hopefully give me no luck, no stutter whatsoever. So how can we enter inside the recovery menu, guys? We need just first to power off the phone, then ideally connect your cable to your laptop, okay? And of course, you need to connect your cable to the phone here. Now that the charging animation is gone, guys, press the volume up and at the same time, press the power button. Okay, keep waiting, the phone will start. The moment you see here the Samsung logo, guys, you just need to release the keys. And now wait, patience is key. We are now what is known as the recovery menu. Now be very cautious with this, guys. How do we navigate here? We need to just use the volume rocker as a navigation. So just make sure to go and select here, wipe, cache partition. Be very careful, guys. If you go and do wipe data, then yeah, that's not going to be good for you. So select it with the power on button. Then one more time, select yes. And now boom, we have just cleaned our cache partition. Now what we can do, reboot the system now, disconnect the phone, wait a bit, suffer the channel, and I'll start the testing. This is now the second restart after wiping out the cache partition. And the first thing we are going to do, guys, is just try to test some of that beautiful always on display and lock screen animation. Now, what do I mean here, guys? All right, see, 
by entering inside uh, the always on display just by pairing off the phone guys we are able to just see hopefully this beautiful animation hopefully without any lag now i have already seen what the always on display is doing with the one ui 5.1.1 thanks to some guys that um, were able to port it and it's really crazy so is it something like this i hope so right so all right one more time also testing how i'm able to lock the phone and unlocking it the finger print read scanner the ultrasonic one is one of the best out there i really like it the main reason is during the night i'm able to unlock my phone without just getting some severe eye pain from the very illuminating optical fingerprint read scanners okay now we're here now let's start with the third test guys the first test is going to be the home screen so you always know i'm starting with this pay attention oh okay I'm using also 120 Hertz guys, and I am also using the highest WQHD plus resolution. I would uh, just say that's a pass. Now, of course, we need to also test not only landscape, but also, of course, test the horizontal and the landscape mode. So one more time. All right. Nice animation, uh, no big issues whatsoever. And by the way, I am just testing this several times, guys. You know the story with the consistency. It might be that you do it twice and that's okay, but then it's gonna fail or stutter on the fourth or the fifth time. So this is why I just wanna test several rounds of animation. Now, about the navigation, if I go to the right, I'm gonna go, oops, okay, to my Google Now and yeah, oh, what the, ooh, okay. Well, definitely lagging, guys. I'm not impressed. I'm not sure why. This is really weird. And just again, pay attention. I have restarted my phone, guys. Okay. So, and by the way, I'm just using also this specific uptime. So eight minutes after the phone has been restarted also with a deleted partition. And now, of course, there's going to be people that say, yeah, you need to wait for Android to try to rebuild the cache. And you know what? I don't really care. All right. That's really the flagship phone. It's a Gen 2. It should be almost flawless. Okay. Right now, I think it's a little bit better. Still not so impressive, I would say. And if I go to the right else, I would say the navigation is quite okay. If we go here, we can just see all the applications. Scrolling is nice. If I click here, search menu will appear. Go outside. So one more time, I'm going to go inside and outside. Yeah, I would say it's quite nice. So now, guys, let's just check the notification animations. I can just pull them from everywhere. Um, this animation used to lag on the S20 and S21 series. Now, I would say it's almost like perfect. And with that, we can also check how the blur is applied. So definitely very nice blur effects. And now we can also do one swipe down to just check the quick toggles. Okay, very smooth, by the way. There has been some updates where even this was not working so nicely let's check here the settings okay so i'm gonna edit buttons it's okay let's press done and let's just press contact us okay yeah it seems to be working very 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 nice okay let's check the media output all right and one more time, let's check the device control. Integrated with SmartThings and also with your Google Things, you can press and select here Home. You can access all your SmartThings like TVs, lights, whatever smart gadgets that you guys have. So the quick settings, I would say, are quite nice. Also, the blur animation, I would say, it's a pass. So now let's check some of the widgets, starting with the favorite. That's the weather widget. Some of the best animations, guys. See, we have people in the park drinking what is probably coffee or yeah who knows probably not coffee probably it's beer i'm going out wow that was quick jesus one more time flawless animation and pay attention guys how the whole background jumps around i really like this this one ui animation now of course we have the battery widget and also one of the other widgets very useful by the way the youtube widget and of course the battery widgets sadly still not clickable um, but we have the youtube widgets and this one is quite nice by the way and it works very very fast okay see all the widgets i would say are performing the way we expect now let's go and open the recent menu okay not so many things but still some applications in the memory so i will not close them not before i'm able to show you the apps opening, closing, and then the um, other test with the free memory allocation. And now, guys, we are about to go and check the app drawer one more time. All right, app drawer. Okay, click here, settings. Yep, not a problem at all. 
okay and recent menu one more time okay no it works really as expected i don't really expect anything else after i've updated the phone and i just actually updated it then deleted the cache and restarted it again now guys let's just see what happens on the wallpaper and style i'm gonna go inside the settings okay quite nice one more time i'm gonna click here and i'm going to select wallpaper and style now let's even try to change some of the wallpaper so let's just go with some wallpaper for example this one all right i want to see how quickly the phone is able to do so i'm pressing down then okay yep I can try to lock the phone. All right, always on display. Lock screen, entering the phone. Okay, it is quite nice. Now what I can do from here, I'm also able to go inside the color palette, guys, and I'm gonna try to apply, let's say, the green one. Ooh, that looks weird, but I just want to see how quick the phone can do this. Go outside, wait, whoa, okay. This used to be very slow in some of the updates. Right now, I'm impressed really, really, really good, and I'm going to apply the standard color palette one more time yep we are now here absolutely fantastic no big issues whatsoever guys and now let's continue with some of the folder animations opening all right opening my social folder okay several times to just test the consistency and see if we're gonna get this nice stat or no no not a problem whatsoever right now i would say a lot of you guys are asking me which kind of application I use for wallpaper. So this is it. I use mainly Wall World, but then also Wallfera. The Wall World is really amazing. Go and just buy it. This is really, this is crazy good, guys. Matthias Eckert created this application. It's all manually hand drawn, guys. It's so beautiful. Boom. What do you want more, right? Like custom hand drawn art, really custom hand drawn art wallpapers and no this is not sponsored right i just love to use that up oh now let's start with some apps opening the first thing i'm gonna do guys i'm going to just go inside and close everything here all right let's close it okay so are we sure yes we don't have anything so now let's open telegram quite fast i would say not a problem at all now let's go and proceed with the messenger boom same here by the way all right messenger open scrolling yep it's very fast and now let's do the same with the Facebook. Open Facebook, try to scroll down. All right. One more time. No issues whatsoever. Now, guys, let's try to do this with some of the more demanding applications. You know, Instagram and specifically TikTok. So Instagram, opening Instagram, scrolling. Now, guys, pay attention. I'm going to go to the left, invoking the camera. Uh, no, one more time. No, one more time. What is going on? Okay, it's here. All right, I'm testing here exactly this, guys, because this is, see here, this is really like a real view of the camera opening. This specific animation didn't run so well in some of uh, the updates I've tested, but I would say that this time it's okay. Let's also open TikTok. All right, let's just see what happens there. All right, scroll some videos and let's just try to access the camera to see if we're going to get any lags. No. Also, back camera, front camera, closing, oops, closing the application, yep. Uh, every time, guys, you work with the camera and you try to do an action like minimize the application, open, close, you might experience some stutter. Why? Because when you open the camera, guys, the viewfinder here operates at 60 hertz refresh rate. So it immediately drops from 120 hertz to 60 hertz. This could be the reason why right? sometimes we experience this stutter. Right now, I would say from what I see, it's quite okay. And one more test, guys. Let's also see here. Uh, the Twitter, right? More people are getting the July update with the build AWF7. So it's really great. So apparently Europe, Australia and Thailand got it. Let's just try to see uh, some Twitter browsing. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's still not, I would say, iOS level, but it's still iOS on Android. I mean, if Elon cannot fix it, probably nobody will be able to fix that. And now, guys, it's time to open some of the camera animation so open the camera check all the modes all right close open wow very smooth let me show you something guys if i go inside the developer options and if i search for refresh right oops like this and i show the refresh rate which is here you're gonna see what i was referring before so right now my phone is able to drop to 24 hertz the moment i touch it boom it's gonna be 120 see and the screen is very responsive. It's L, 
TPO technology whatsoever. But the moment I open the camera, boom, like I told you guys, we are now using 60 hertz, all right? 120, 60. And sometimes this might cause the stutter, but right now I think that Samsung are doing it, yep, nicely. So no problem whatsoever. Now let's show the memory location. Again, I'm going inside my developer's option, guys. Why? Okay, right now, of course, I have kind of like rebooted my phone, but you can imagine why it's not the best idea to just have eight gigs in the S23 Ultra. So if you have an option, guys, always go with the higher memory configuration, the random access memory. I have 12 gigabytes. And by the way, you can also click memory usage and just see exactly which of the applications are using what amount of memory. Of course, always the champion of memory usage is the Android OS by itself. So far, so good guys. Now it's time to test the split window. And for that, I have here my little helper. So you know about this. When I click here, boom, I'm gonna get YouTube, right? And also Telegram. And yep, what I'm doing right now, I'm just going to try to switch it, yep. And if I don't need it, guys, how can I go back? Let's say if I wanna go back to Telegram, I can do like this. All right, and I'm gonna, of course, test also the other situation. I'm going to now go full Telegram. All right, I would say it works. I would, I would say it works. And now, guys, let's also try to test the pop-up window. What's the best way for you to do so? Just go inside here. The moment when you are inside the recent menu, just hold it up, guys, and you can put it here for a pop-up view or put it here for a split view. So, boom, pop-up view. All right, let's open another one, guys, just for the test. Uh, let's open Telegram. I'm going to go again here. I'm going to hold Telegram and also pop it up like this. So right now I will have the two of them. It's probably not the best use case scenario. There are probably others, but I'm just demonstrating what you're able to do with uh, the One UI. It's just good, guys. And you can, by the way, minimize them, right? Boom, close them. So you cannot just open unlimited application in the pop-up window. You know, let's, let's do first the Geekbench 5. This is before the whole Apple Geekbench saga situation. So let me just run that benchmark and see how much we can get. All right, this is why I love Geekbench 5, guys, because it still supports this upload. And then, yeah, not only can you see the results, single you know, core score 1347 and the multi core score 3800, but you have also the option to go here and check the history with all the tests that you have been doing. And by the way, guys, you can just see on the 9th of June, I did another one, and yeah, it was really far better, but you know my opinion about benchmarks, right? They're just a bit too much overrated. Now, guys, one more thing before I wrap up the video, let's just try to test some of that sweet camera shutter light, because I know it's important for a lot of you. All right, guys, for that, I'm just gonna use this one just to have something. This is the Polyan Tracker again. I've been doing lately some music on this one. So now, guys, before I start, I wanna share something. If I go inside the camera system, you're gonna see I'm using all to HDR. Picture softening is to medium. I'm using the quick tap shutter, guys. I'm not prioritizing focus on speed, and I'm just using here the balanced speed and quality for the capture speed. Also, from the viewfinder, I can show you that I'm as well using the scene optimizer. Okay, now I think the buffer is already full, but I'm able to just still, yeah. And this is guys not using the quickest setting. So yeah. now we're checking, because you see all the nodes are moving here. So do we have some nodes uh, with some problems? No, everything is quite nice. Okay, this one was not apparently, but yeah, I would say that uh, it works. It works okay. We know that Samsung still have issues with shooting kids or moving pets. But guys, let me know down below in the comments what you think about the July update. It's probably just only a security incremental update. We never know with Samsung, right? They are not really so, so much revealing in those change logs. Thank you so much for watching, guys. VST over and bye.